good? <laughs> yes, you look great. <laughs> okay, because I feel like a little bit of a desert troll. No, <laughs> you're looking really good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sexton, everybody. You are here for episode number six, baby. Let's rock and roll. I can't believe we're already six episodes in. This is so exciting. You are back with your favorite sisters, Lauren and Camille. Our Instagrams are at SheWolfLauren. Yep, that's me. <laughs> and at Camille Misbach, C A M I L L E M I S B A C H. I spell both now that I'm now that I'm married. And we are so excited for today. Welcome to episode six. We are talking about ghosting and gratitude today. So please, before this, we're gonna shamelessly plug our Instagram. At the Den Mothers, that's right. We've already created a new Instagram for ourselves. Down with the patriarchy, down with the censoring. They cannot stop us from thriving. No, so we are back on Instagram. Follow us at the Den Mothers. And also, please subscribe, rate us five stars only, or comment what? on any of your favorite podcast streaming networks. It helps us so much. And also, we love to hear honest and true feedback about how you guys are feeling about this so far. So welcome back, Wolfpack. It is time for episode number six. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> Yay, our Wi-Fi is back today. Lauren is in a new place and yeah. we are also doing video. So expect us to be up on YouTube as well if all oh. goes to plan. That's How are you, Lauren? Oh, sis. <laughs> Honestly, I've never been better in my whole life. I just am so oh fucking God. good right now. I could <sighs> not. I just, I'm so good. I don't really have much else to say. There's love in my heart. There's love in my loins. There's love all around me. And, and I'm there, feeling good. And there is also a new set of claws on those nails I see. <laughs> oh, no, honey. These are not new. What? Nope. These are the best nails I've ever gotten. Those they look are so good. They're almost two weeks old. I got okay. them before Shane came. Okay, so, well, those look fucking phenomenal. I have not you. seen your new set. Today you told me that you were sick of my orange hair, and that broke my heart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think because right now your eyes are looking so light. Yeah. And, well, for me, I just want to see your hair either super blonde or yeah. super black. You know what? Foxy Red, I'm getting used to her. I think that I'm ready for blonde, but the cool thing about this red is that when you see it in different lighting, it actually looks gold, so it feels yes. like I'm supposed to have gold hair. It's yeah. very cool. I think it does look really cool. Yeah. So we'll see, though. I It could happen today that I book diet white. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Well, How before, are you, Kenny? Yeah. I'm also honestly the best I've ever been. Yeah. I'm continuing – to become the artist I've always been meant to be. <laughs> the thing about art the is thing about when you do it, <laughs> it gets better. It gets better. Mm -hmm. No, I feel very in touch with my creative side right now. I've also started jumping back into real estate after a much needed break and getting my head straight. I'm so excited about the podcast. I feel like the first – five episodes have just gone so well. And I love having a space where we can just create and talk about what we want. And we're getting really great feedback. When I get messages from people saying that it's their favorite podcast, it sets my soul on fire because it's like, it's our true, it's our true connection that we're sharing with other people. And the fact that they love it is just, it's making me thrilled. <laughs> Yeah. It it's is also, really nice. Yeah. And that's why we love to hear feedback from the listeners because it really does fuel you. Like I've heard from a couple of people, it feels like I'm in the room with you two and I'm just like mm. having a conversation with my friends. And that's exactly yeah. the vibe that I want wanted going into yeah. this. That was on our vision board. It's like we want people to feel like we're just their friends. <laughs> so yeah, for me, that feels so amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and one of the 
one of the things that I love and that I think is so important is for that vibe to carry through all the time because I think it's really easy to be like, oh, we have to have these super specific topics or we need to have guests or we need to do X, Y, Z. And what we need to do is just show up as you and me. Yeah. And um, that's why last week we went through some strife around the – Instagram, like what, maybe we should change our name of the podcast. And we just kept coming back to the sex den because number one, sex is life. And number two, we love the idea of a den and having mm-hmm. like a space where we can congregate and where we can come and like have a cuddle puddle and relax. And it just feels, it feels so right. It's the community. It's it the does. wolf pack. It's the wolf pack. And den yeah. just encompasses everything cozy and delicious. And I, I'm so glad we stuck with it. Yeah. And then one more week update for me was that I was reached out to by a friend who I haven't talked to in a few years. We had a little bit of a wow. falling out and it it felt so good to reconnect again. And I think that it's interesting timing because Lauren and her best friend from high school had a falling out. And didn't speak for a while. And after you did your first Bufo experience, she had reached back out to you. And Mm -hmm. literally the exact same thing happened to me. We had a falling out a few years ago, like a year and a half, maybe two years ago. And I did my first Bufo experience. And then she reached out to me. And she's had a lot go on in the past year or two. And she just called me and said, life (laughs) – her, she left me a voicemail and she said, I am on this whole kick of life is really short and I would be so upset if I died tomorrow and I didn't tell you how much I still loved you. And I just mm. called her back and just cried. And I'm just like, I, that just is so special to me because she didn't know how much I needed to hear that too. And so this is just a reminder that if you've had a falling out with someone and now it's been so long and you just feel like, really, why did we even have this falling out? What happened? It's it's when you're called to it, it's time to reach back out to them because it's it make it creates closure for you and it also creates closure for them. And I think that she felt like she needed that and she didn't even know how much I needed to hear that. So it was a really powerful evening for me. We talked for a couple hours and I feel so good. I feel so good. That's amazing. And I, you, I'm so happy to hear that you reconnected because I know that that was really heavy on your heart. Like it would come up and mm-hmm. be like, damn, that hurts. Or like, you know, yeah. that's just this weird wound that's just like still open. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, You saying that I hadn't even connected it, but I have a letter to write. Mm. Like I have a call to make. I know you do. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I do. And it's like, oh, I'll get really passionate about it and then I kind of let it fade away. And you just – for some reason, you just saying that just now, I'm like, "Mm, I got to write a letter. I got to do it. Because I think it's going to be in the form of a letter for me. Yeah. So I I can express it. Yeah. I was thinking about that this morning when I said I was going to mention it. I exactly thought of who you were going to think of. Yeah, it's well, time. It's going to feel good. Yeah. Okay, so let's jump into it, you guys. Okay. Um, This subject is brought to you by a bunch of <laughs> fuck boys and fuck girls who have <laughs> screwed everybody over. Yeah, <laughs> you know? and we are so fucking sick we of are them. So and I've, fucking and sick I of have it. <laughs> been a fuck girl, I guess. I'm a fuck yeah. girl. So this topic is ghosting. Ghosting. Uh, well, couldn't be worse. <laughs> yeah, couldn't. <sighs> so sad. It couldn't. So here's the thing about ghosting. I actually love ghosting. Yeah. And we're going to talk <laughs> about it. So la- we had this talk live on Instagram and it was one of those things where you were talking about how fucked up ghosting is and people were asking <laughs> yeah. us questions like, how do you, how do you not ghost? And all of a sudden I'm just like, sinking down on wherever I was sitting at the time. I'm like so uncomfortable. Oh, no. I was so uncomfortable because I realized that I was a ghosting phenom. I was so good at ghosting. I, oh, yeah. I did not enjoy, you know, like telling the people awkward goodbye. conversations. <laughs> yeah. And so after that, after that conversation, I literally texted like <laughs> eight dudes. <laughs> 
<laughs> or maybe it was six. I thought you were just saying like two. It was, no, it was a couple. And I'm like, hey, I am just wanting to let you know. I know it's been a couple months or like whatever it had been. And I'm like, I am so sorry for ghosting you. And most of them were like, I didn't even consider that ghosting. Like, it's totally fine. Just move on. Trust you me, know? they like, did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they saw that and they were they like, were, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, they were, they were really trying- impacted <laughs> by my absence. <laughs> they couldn't sleep for weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh no, buddy. It was a big deal. I yeah. know it. I know it Trust was a big me, deal. I know you needed therapy. <laughs> yeah. I think you were journaling about it. We don't have to play coy here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Try to play cool. You yeah. really missed me, didn't you? <laughs> Try not to play it cool. Oh, I can see right through you, buddy. I yeah. can see right through you. <laughs> Holy yeah, shit. so Lauren but made anyway, amends with people I made who amends. did not give a shit. The people who did not. <laughs> They're like, oh, I thought I ghosted you. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so sorry for ghosting you. And they're like, actually, they're I'm like, sorry. Lauren looked back at our text thread. It was actually me. I actually didn't text you, you back. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, got it. You're like, fuck, well, okay. Clear, clear the air. Yeah. <laughs> clear my conscience, you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, but in all seriousness, okay, in all seriousness, this kind of, it kind of struck a chord with me last night because I was hanging out with a girlfriend and she was honestly kind of devastated. (laughs) Okay, do we need to get out our laughs? (laughs) Okay, you have one more laugh. (laughs) You get five seconds. And then pull it together. I was just, no. just thinking about how funny it is the idea of like apologizing and them just seeing my number on their phone and being like, what Who the, the fuck, fuck are you? Been, like three <laughs> yeah. months. We literally went on one date yeah. and you're apologizing for ghosting me. Like, okay, it's fine. You're like, okay, I'm married, I'm honey. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm married. It's yeah. been five years. You don't you five really, years. trust me, you really didn't need to do yeah. this. <laughs> I'm like crying. <laughs> okay, I'm really sorry. Okay. Okay, okay perfect. I can I'm So fine. I was hanging out with a girlfriend last night. I mean, today's subject was gonna be something different. And okay. for <clears throat> me, it just really upset me to see her this way because basically she was getting out into the dating scene again. Um, and on Bumble, she was experiencing having good conversations with people, and then all of a sudden they would just unmatch. And I kind of realized that. Honestly, it doesn't matter if you've talked to the person for five minutes. It also doesn't matter if you've talked to them for years. Ghosting is never okay in my opinion. I mean, aside from – and we've talked about this on a live before, but aside from a situation where you really need to get away from the person, like it's super toxic and you need to cut off all communication in order to – you know, create closure and safety for yourself. Um, That's a completely different scenario. But you, to me, you owe people the respect of at least saying, hey, I'm not into this. I'm so sorry. I thought we were going to have a connection. For me, it's just already a no. Because then you at least close that door for people, especially when you're in the dating scene. You're opening all your energetic portals to other people. And for you to not allow Mm. someone – Thank you. Um, For you to not allow somebody to close those off, it feels like you're leaving a lot of like open wounds for them, even though it might just be a couple quick conversations. But it's just never okay to ghost someone. It isn't. I I fucking hate it. Mm. And I hate people that do that. I mean, I was ghosted and it freaking broke my heart. It really did. It is really – you know what it is too is I think that we live in an age where things are so instant. Like you can yep. match, unmatch, follow, unfollow, like yep. DM, delete your DM. It's like it's so quick. It's so, so, so quick that we we forget about the human connection and yep. that the person on the receiving end exists in an energetic body. Like we, it isn't just yes. about like, oh, I'm out there dating. It's like, okay, this person's putting an effort. You're texting a little bit. And instead of just completely disappearing, you can just say, hey, I'm not feeling this right now. But it's that – it's us always – living in our truth. And I think that so many of us are really just struggle with that, like struggle to own how you're feeling. And so 
instead of simply stating what you need and what you feel, that feels like a burden because we don't even know how to own that. Yes. So like I think, you know, ghosting is this – it's a phenomenon, but it sort of yeah. is because it's so easy to do. It's so easy to unmatch. And I want to say I think that – I don't have as strong of an adverse reaction to it as you do, Cammy, because I feel like at any time we're allowed to cut our energy off from people. And I think that we are in a place like there's a balance between being a good person and like telling somebody when you're closing that energetic portal and also not having to answer to anybody. Do you know what I mean? Like if yeah. I'm not getting a good vibe from someone or like I'm not – like they say something kind of misogynistic or I'm just like not into it, I reserve the right at any time to just be like, peace. Like I don't need to say to you like, I'm sorry. You're so sweet and so kind. I don't know how to describe it. It's just like sometimes I just like a clean ass cutoff. Like <clears throat> bye. Yeah. That's enough of an answer for me. Now it yeah. doesn't feel as good. Like I think saying – you know, goodbye to somebody is better. But I also reserve the right to cut anything off that no longer serves me however I, I need to in that moment, however I'm able to show up in the moment. I I do agree with that. And I can completely see how – because you're basically taking control and taking power uh, – taking the power of your own energy – for me, it just feels like, especially when people are on dating apps and they're obviously trying to make efforts of like finding love or like going on dates mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. It just feels like a series of people ghosting you can really hurt somebody. And for me, I, I guess is. maybe that's something that I am working on as well is like honoring myself over others, other people's energy because for me, I am a people pleaser that's in my blood. So for me, it feels just devastating to leave someone high and dry because when people do that to me, I energetically, it's hard for me to get over. So I would rather have someone do a clean break for me by just saying like, hey, I'm just not into this. But when you all – well, like if you're having a conversation with someone and then they just unmatch you and you're like, wait, uh, what happened? Like why couldn't you just – and then you're just kind of left of like, but I thought we were hitting it off and I was like ready to go on a date, you know? So I just feel like it can be like, hey, I just don't see a connection and and I appreciate – it. not even – Hey, I just don't see a connection. Send. Cut isn't off. <laughs> the, isn't the ghosting the same thing? Like I'm having a whole moment right now where mm. I actually really don't think. I actually think love ghosting. <laughs> I actually fucking love it in, mm. in certain ways. If you've had sex with somebody and you ghost them, I, I don't think it's okay. Yeah, you, you, you literally you have argued me that exchange. If you're just texting with somebody on a dating app, like I'm not trying to be conceited here, but literally probably I've, I've – engage in a texting conversation with hundreds of men. Yeah. And it's like, what are you supposed to do? Clean break What am I supposed to do them? every single time? Be like, hey, buddy, like I know we've had a couple messages. And I guess this goes back into like what the definition of ghosting is, but I'm going to get deep real quick. I'm going to get deep. I'm ready for it. For the friend that is getting, that is being, okay, no, no, no. I'm not even going to talk about her. I'm going to talk about me. I'm going to talk about me. I don't know if it was technically considered ghosting, but I was in a situation where I would sleep with someone, think that we were going to sleep together again, and then they would like not really message me or make an effort to sleep with me again, and it would kind of just fizzle off. I would consider that sim like kind of a ghosting situation. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's their responsibility to let me down easily. I don't. I think that it's my responsibility to honor how I'm reacting to that situation. Do, if somebody is ghosting me and I'm receiving it as, oh no, what happened? We were supposed to go on a date. That to me doesn't feel like a healed reaction. To mm -hmm. me, that feels like, oh no, tell me I'm good enough for you to at least just say goodbye. I just want you to tell me that I'm worthy and like at least give me the decency because don't I deserve it? Don't I deserve it? Wow. Uh -uh. Yo, if you ghost me, thank you. Like yeah. if you th if you ghost roll me, it, fuck roll it into you. The next. <laughs> yeah, fuck you, and also gratitude. Like fuck that's you and gratitude. actually, yeah, that's how I feel because it's like 
looking back on it, all of the people that are ghosting you are doing you a favor because they're bowing out. Mm. They're saying, I'm not for you right now. And it's your responsibility to fucking listen. Listen, (laughs) don't go trying to like reach for it. Don't go trying to say like, no, 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 pick me, pick me. I'm worthy. I'm worthy. Like, yeah, no, let them go. You know what? You know what those people aren't doing? They're not worshiping you. So you don't fucking need them anyways. Exactly. So it's like, do you really think, like, do you think that that's going to be beneficial in the future? No. If they're ghosting you, thank you. Thank you. Yes. And next. Yes. Okay. Actually, how I feel about it. And you know what? I was kind of thinking the same thing about dating apps. Like, you're going on there knowing that you're just swipe, 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 swipe until you find someone. First of all, you're basing it completely off looks. Yeah. So if you're yeah. not getting messages back, I mean, also the bios are funny, whatever. For me, Dude. I would dig into the bios, but also, you know how bad I was at dating apps. I am honestly so bad over the phone. <laughs> In person, so I'm cute, a fucking Jamie. rock star. <laughs> yes, you are a rock star. <laughs> I am a rock star. <laughs> On dating apps, I was super boring and so cheesy. So whatever. But you are kind of going on there thinking – It's sort of this quick response type of thing. So if you say something that someone doesn't like, they probably are like, okay, next. I can tell immediately. Like you can tell immediately. Mm -hmm. Somebody says one thing. Like I went on a date with this dude. I mean, okay, this was was from a dating app. But I could tell literally based on one thing that he said that it just wasn't going to be a match. And you want to know what it was? He's like, I'm really into scary movies. Are you into scary movies? Like (laughs) would you be able to watch scary movies with me? And I'm like – no, bro. Lock. Like, I <laughs> fucking hate scary movies. Like, yeah. it will never happen. There's no, like, cute, romantic, like, there's nothing that will get me to like scary movies. I no. don't like them. So if you really like them and I really don't like them, that's not something I'm going to get into. Yeah. Like, rom-coms, sure. You know, old-ass documentaries for about me, boring even, World War II shit, no. sure. But, like, yeah. scary movies, no. Well, for me, even bringing up movies in general would be a no. I mean, I had so many things that would be a no. Like, <laughs> if people, like, had a sports team in their bio, I was like, nope, because I yep. hate sports. <laughs> yeah. So what like do you fishing? mean? fishing, no. If they bring up fishing or sports, for me, it was just immediately a no. I mean, okay, so yeah. I'm having a full new view on this, and – I think I actually like ghosting. It's a buy. On dating apps, if we're talking about you having yeah. an energetic exchange with someone by sleeping together, for me, even just going on a date with someone because they're making an effort to like get ready, go out, have dinner. I think you at least owe them the respect of sending a text of like, hey, great night. I'm just not feeling it. That's it. Like for me, I just – Okay. Going to a date, I put in a lot of energy into – making conversation like that's kind of my thing is I love to have conversations with people kind of like explore so for me it's at least in my personal opinion if you're going on a date with someone I think you owe them their respect of just saying like hey I'm just not feeling it okay I am gonna say more here I don't think don't prove me wrong again I'm sorry I'm not trying to prove you wrong I just really like me wrong and I don't like it no (laughs) Okay, so I want to look at this from two sides, right? There's the ghoster and the ghosty. The ghoster is the one who's doing the ghosting, to make it clear. The ghosty is the person who's being ghosted. Yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't think, first of all, and I said this before, I don't think we owe anybody shit. If you want to ghost somebody, you can. Check in with yourself energetically, though. If you are the ghoster and it feels good to ghost, then – Okay, ghost. But most of the time it doesn't feel good because we want to be considerate of another Mm -hmm. person's energy. Yes. So if you are the ghoster and you are a chronic ghoster or you have recently ghosted somebody, maybe make energetic amends because that isn't a good practice to get into just on an energy basis and also just on like a human respect basis. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you have agency over every action you make. If you want to ghost and that feels great for you, then do what do whatever you need to do to make a clean break. On the receiving end of the for the ghosty, if you are ghosted, take it as a moment to check in with yourself. Check in. Just check in with yourself. 
where am I right now on my healing journey? What is this bringing up in me? Do I feel worthless? Do I feel ugly? Do I feel like I'm not deserving of somebody's time? How am am I I feeling? Am I even energetically putting out into the universe that I'm open to dating do or am I, I want energetically right. shut off to love right now? Right. All of those like, things. All of those things because I really believe that these traumas in our life – and ghosting can be a trauma. Like you show up to a date, somebody ghosts you. It's like, damn, that really hurts. It, it's, a, it's a little trauma. It's a little tea. But those are the moments when checking in with yourself and asking yourself those deep questions of like, how am I feeling right now? If you're like, all right, thanks. Like, okay, no big deal. That's probably a better place to be in than like, oh my God, I knew it. I knew that they were going to ghost me because I shouldn't even, like I knew I couldn't even get them to come on a date with me and blah, blah, blah. Like whatever your internal dialogue is when you're being ghosted, when you have just been ghosted, that is the part of you that you need to pay attention to. Mm. So ghosting is a gift. Anything that hurts you is a fucking gift. And that's what I want to talk about next And that's gratitude. Yep. Because I've been looking at the last couple years of my life and it's like, damn, the things that have hurt me the most, the things that could have put me into like a trauma spiral or into some kind of uh, really negative mindset. Yeah. Like, you know, people will say a lot of the times like, you know, how do you remain so positive or whatever? And I'm like, yo, you're not understanding this. It is not – it's not blank positivity. It's not like I'm just yes. walking around feeling like a positive bubble. And you too, Cammy. Like yeah. I know that you're not – like we're we're wired for positivity because of our genetics as well. Like yeah. we've talked about this a little bit before. But I think that what it is is it's immense gratitude. Like thank you I to, know. All, to everybody who has hurt me, to everybody that I felt hurt by, to the experiences that I received as pain – or that I brought onto myself as pain because it was exactly in those moments looking back where I'm like, that's the shit I had to heal from. Yeah. That's the shit right there. Yeah. God, no, this is really just nailing it on the head because I was ghosted. <laughs> is that even the term? I am I think so it would be bad hitting. at the, hitting the nail on the head. <laughs> you know what that is? That's hammering that that dump truck down. Is, I'm never good what? with ghosting. That's why I never try to repeat people's <laughs> quotes because I'm like, and then, <laughs> and with being vulnerable, <laughs> I was gonna try. I was gonna try to do a Brene Brown quote, and I was just thinking, like, should I actually look it up and read it verbatim? Because I'm gonna fuck it up. I'm gonna fuck it up. So I'm gonna do a shortened version of it. <laughs> no. Okay. No. Um. No. This. This is. <laughs> the <nail on> <laughs> okay because I in my most traumatic ghosting experience which was someone I had slept with a lot and like mm-hmm. really put my feelings on the line you know and just put my heart out there I was ghosted for like four months if that had never happened I would have never met my husband See? Uh-huh. See? And I See? would have never gone through the healing. Dude, I got my freaking nipples pierced. I dyed my hair blonde. I went through this whole phase of like, fuck men, blah, 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 because of that. And I discovered who I was. I honestly read, listened to a video by Brene Brown because I told you, I was like, uh, fuck men. I don't care about them anymore. I hate dating, blah, blah, blah. And you, I think you sent me a video on vulnerability by Brene Brown and I watched it and she was like, are you gonna, are you gonna live your whole life without being vulnerable and just live in this, you know, crazy little box of safety? Or are you going to put yourself, put yourself out there? Keep putting yourself out there. Being denied is a good thing, you know? And I literally met my husband the next day. Because I decided to be vulnerable and get back out there. So fuck that person who did that. And also thank you because I never would have met my husband. And that is a crazy thought. I mean, yeah, that horrible experience happened for a reason. And I was trying to explain the same thing to my girlfriend last night. It's like, 
okay, well, what are you going to do? Like, you're just going to stop dating altogether? Like, no, that doesn't make any sense. You need to be thankful these guys are doing that to you because they're not your person. Thank them and keep, yeah. keep putting yourself out there. Like, when you're energetically ready, put it into the universe. You don't need to be this closed off, scared of dating because people are ghosting you. No, you, you just keep living your life and realize that they're doing that for your benefit. So thank you. They're doing it for your benefit. Yeah. Yeah. So thank my, you. Seriously, my favorite – I don't know. I think that was with Shane that I came up with that. Fuck you and also gratitude. Yeah, it's did. like it, – Fuck it you is and gratitude. Ex- fuck you and gratitude because it's exactly the way that I feel. It's that moment and I, I think, you know, that's one of my favorite videos of all time and I go back and I watch it all the time and we will put it in the show notes because it's important. Yeah. To have that in there. It is. I get I send it to my clients. I used to play it for my literally, I figured out a way to get that into the jail when I was teaching at jail and played it for my inmates. Like yep. I'm gonna send I it to know my friend that, right after this. <laughs> yeah, like it, it's just so important because what she says is just putting your heart out there and living wholeheartedly means that you express yourself knowing that you could be heartbroken, but that you don't have a choice but to live in your heart's truth. Mm. Like when you open your heart and when you live with your chest and you're you're kind of just like, okay, I just have to tell you this. I, I need to express this. It, it – <laughs> I cannot describe the power of being able to say how you feel without expectation of how others will respond to you. It's like your expression is not for other people. It's Mm. for you. Yep. Your gratitude is not for other people. It's for you. And one of I know that I'm getting ahead of myself, but one of the listener questions this week was just about um was about like how you how you incorporate show, spirituality how yeah, you dive into how spirituality you, yeah how you dive into spirituality and i just had this conversation with a client yesterday and it it comes back to me to gratitude like it's the way that you can stay present it's the way that you can connect with god or the goddess or the universe or whatever it is what's living in your chest is mm-hmm. expressing from your heart to other people to the universe to the world to yourself what you're grateful for every single fucking day yep like every single day i think i text you probably a couple times a week you and i text each other back and forth just how grateful we are for each other it's like i can't express oh, it I enough know. i want to say it every day for the rest of my life yeah i'm so grateful for you for, for you. michael yeah. for momo like all the time yeah it feels really good it feels really good to be grateful and there are a couple things that you can a couple ways you can easily start your gratitude practice uh number 1 being grateful for your food we mm. eat eat between one to six times a day, depending on who you are. <laughs> one between one to twenty-four one to times. 20. If you're Camille, it's one. If it's your me, it's twenty-four. <laughs> yeah. So we eat obviously every single day. And something to be grateful for is what you're nourishing your body with. I mean, mm-hmm. even now that I eat fish, <laughs> I'll say like I'm really grateful for this little being who was sacrificed who whose life was sacrificed for me to eat him. Like just just being grateful for things that you're putting inside of your body is actually a very special way to spend a few moments of your day and also um just being grateful for the company you know, that you're mm-hmm. eating with, or if you're eating by mm-hmm. yourself, grateful for a moment alone. If you're yeah. drinking a coffee, thank you so much for giving me energy. <laughs> you know, right. it's just, yeah. it's a very easy way to incorporate gratitude into your daily practice. It truly is. Mm-hmm. It truly is. Mm-hmm. There, There's something about it. And I also really appreciate having a specific gratitude journal. Yeah. It's something I'm actually going to get an extra journal right now because I incorporate gratitude. It, it comes very naturally to me. Journaling has been something that's just a part of me for my whole life. So, you know, my feelings journal is my gratitude. It's also my daily recap if I if I feel like doing one. It's what what's, you know – riddling me with anxiety or pain or whatever it is at the time. I'm so expressive in that way. But yeah, 
having a specific gratitude journal that you write in before you go to sleep and before you wake up. It can literally just be five things a day. And I love the practice of reading them out loud. It's, I encourage my clients to do that. Like write down in the morning, right when you wake up, like roll over. It should be right by your bed. If you do a dream journal, it can be in the same one. Roll over, have your pen already there before you brush your teeth, before you even take a piss, like before mm-hmm. you pee. <laughs> yeah. Before you t- take shake your house. <laughs> yeah, before you take a pair. Before you have a leak in your yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. <laughs> before you empty your bladder. Okay. <laughs> okay. Before you take a <laughs> yeah. sip of water. Yeah. Let's keep listing things that are before, that you do before. <laughs> before you take a shit. Before, before you have your coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so you before are going you. <laughs> you just go okay. for 45 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> ah. We never yeah. before you walk your dog. Before you get out of your bed. Before, <laughs> before you give your partner a kiss. Okay. Before. <laughs> before oh, you okay. get your bean. <laughs> okay. Before you do any of that. Yeah. <laughs> those befores that we just listed and any other befores that you have. <laughs> Write down your five things and then I love to say them, whisper them out loud. And it can mm-hmm. be th- – there's no right or wrong way to do this. It doesn't have to be like I'm grateful for everything. Sometimes my gratitude is like I am so grateful for all that is and everything that penetrates my body on a cellular <laughs> yeah. level. And other days it's like I'm grateful to blink my eyeballs. It's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. you know, <laughs> thank you for the fluid in my eye socket. <laughs> like Whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. There's so much to be grateful for. And if you can't find anything to be grateful for, start within your body. I'm grateful that my lungs expand and collapse without me having to think about it. I'm grateful that blood throws flows through my veins and that food digests. Like it can be the smallest things mm-hmm. and it's it's magic. I absolutely love that. And I cannot wait to start my gratitude journal. I yeah. told Lauren earlier, I haven't been journaling or meditating. I was kind of giving my body a rest from the spiritual practices after uh, doing my DMT journey. Yeah. But I have found meditation and gratitude in other things. Like I've been waking up and taking Momo for a really long walk on the beach. Mm. And I've also – Well, I've been walking her down to the point where she just completely lays down in any shady spot she can find and I'll just have to pick her up and hold her. But I've been finding gratitude in letting Momo do whatever she wants. Like I've been taking her on walks for her because usually I would pull pull her away and sometimes I'm like, okay, come on. This is so – this is too much. But the other day we walked on the beach and we passed a bench and she jumped up on the bench and laid down and I was like – Molly, I said, do you want to just lay here? And there were so many sailboats on the bay for some reason that day. I'm like, oh, my God, you want to sit and appreciate the sailboats? And I'm like, okay, that sounds good. So I just sat with her. We sat for like five minutes. And in that time, I I realized, I'm like, yeah, why was I rushing so quickly to get off the bay? So I took off my shoes. I walked on the sand instead. We walked on the bay. And – it was just a small moment of like, wow, I'm really grateful that this little dog allowed me an opportunity to take more time on the bay yeah. to ground and appreciate life. So it's literally things mm. like that. Or me walking past flowers now and I smell flowers. Yes, so I'm do like, I. These are they smell so potent. I'm so grateful that I have all these smells. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. There is nothing there is there's nothing um what am i looking for burden some some mm-hmm. <laughs> burden some yeah. about being grateful it doesn't have to be this extravagant practice where you're meditating and writing it's it's just being a little more conscious during the day of things you're grateful for and that can even be i'm grateful for waking up yes i'm i'm grateful to have a place to live. I'm grateful for water. I mean, Mm -hmm. and you can say them out loud, you can think it in your head, but it creates such a beautiful life when you realize how many things there are to be grateful for. It's so true. Mm -hmm. And it's, I mean, what a nice practice. It's just nice. Mm -hmm. I love things that are nice. It's like, yep, that feels (laughs) really good and it nourishes me and it feels good. Yeah. (laughs) 
that's it. I like doing things that feel good. I ask myself that on a daily basis. Does this feel good? Yep. Cool. I'm going to keep doing that. Does it feel not good? Yep. Like just checking in with your body when you do things that feel good and reminding yourself. It's so easy to do things for like a month and be like, oh, that felt really good, you know? And then you kind of forget about it. Like start checking in with your body and being like, okay, well, what was that? What are those things that make me feel good? I literally have a list of things that make me feel good that I can go back to if I feel out of alignment. I love that. Start doing that. You know, I want to say something too is that your life will start to feel a lot better if you start looking at the positive in every situation. And we are experiencing this right now where it feels for a family member of ours, it feels like every single thing they touch, something goes wrong. And Mm -hmm. it feels like there's so much focus on every single thing that's going wrong instead of just being grateful for things in life that have gone right. And we've seen what uh, an emotional burden that can become. So even in situations like we've already talked about, like ghosting or Mm -hmm. something breaks in your house or you're on a project and it's canceled. You know, it's there are all there are things in life that can tear you down, especially I mean this is a little bit off topic, but I do think it's important because things in life can feel like it can really hurt your soul and bring you just so far down. Yeah. And if you're focusing on those things, it feels like to others around you as well, that everything is wrong instead of bringing the experience back into yourself and saying, what can I learn from this? What can I be grateful for? Like, why did this glass just shatter? You know Mm -hmm. what? Maybe something would have happened later and I would have like cut my lip on it or something. Like, thank you so much. Thank you for that. I've been working so hard on this project and it was canceled. You know, I had that experience. And then it was like this realization of like, wait, that's just not what I was supposed to be doing energetically. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know, thank you for this experience. Thank you. Thank you to everything that's going wrong because I now have an, I, I now have a time to experience and practice my gratitude more than ever. Right. And it's – so sometimes when you're first starting to do gratitude or when you're first starting to lean into like surrender and trust and like worth and all of this work, it's like it can feel like you're kind of faking it. Yeah. Right? Like so that's why I say start small because Mm -hmm. you – if you cannot find gratitude in breathing and in water and in things that you can even compare to like other people that just don't fucking have that, then – you really need to get some help. Like you really need to get some help because finding gratitude in those little things, like if it doesn't feel good for you right now to find gratitude in big fucked up traumas, then okay, you don't have to do that. But what you can do is start finding gratitude in little things because you have a lot to be alive for. Yeah. Right? There's so much – like the chances of us being alive are so small Mm -hmm. that we better fucking find some gratitude and some humility in this whole experience that we call life. (laughs) In this human experience. In this human experience. Yeah. Yeah. Like let's let's get there collectively. I think that if we all practiced gratitude, the world would be so much more peaceful because you know what? Some of the countries that have the poorest, like the lowest GDPs have some of the most beautiful spiritual practices and all of them include gratitude. Yeah. I mean, like, all of them, you it feels like food. there's a lot of thank spirituality. You. And it's, and it's you know, yes, there's organized religion and there's some, you know, messed up stuff there and dogmatic in certain ways. But like the practice of grace or like thanking God and like everything that happened so that you could get there that day to be with your family eating the food, that's beautiful. Yeah. I'm into that. Honestly, and, I'm and sorry, a but year even ago, praying. <laughs> praying. Of course. I literally – that was part of my journey was I literally was on my knees praying and crying. Like when you go to mass, you're on your knees because you are a human. Yeah. You're humble. And you are, you are humbled. So 
here we are. We're talking completely off track here, but not really. Because <laughs> yeah. I think this kind of shit's important. Like I literally – I was so against even the thought of anything religious. The Bible, the pew, the communion, the all of that. Like ew, no, ew, 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 no, no, no. And while I still feel like what that kind of organized religion has done to the world is fucked up, yeah. I – understand and resonate with the message mm. of so many of the practices. Me too. So many of the practices. I know. It's like, like it does feel like the morals in in organized religion – sorry, not not the morals. I think some – there are some things that are off just because of interpretation that has gone wrong over the years. But I do think the practice of recognizing – the higher power and also, I mean, praying that God has created your path is the same thing as trusting the timing of your life in trusting in the universe. It's just spoken in a different way. So trusting that everything's happening for a reason, which has been my whole fucking, (laughs) my whole, uh, what, what that has been your religion. Phrase, that's been my religion for my whole life is like everything happens for a reason. I'm telling everyone it's the same thing as saying God has a plan. It's <laughs> yep. And I've been so anti that my whole life, but <laughs> yeah, it's funny how and I think turn that around. I think that if somebody identifies with a, a specific like uh, denomination of religion that. They, I don't know if they would think that it's the same thing, but it feels the same in my body. To say like God has a plan, like the un- if I replace that with the universe has a plan, if I replace that with, yeah, I trust the timing of my life because I know that the universe has my back. Like all of that sounds really similar to me. Like it just feels praying similar. Praying versus gratitude. It, praying <laughs> versus gratitude. Having a gratitude practice versus praying. It's like – Okay, like asking for things. Okay, let's talk about manifestation and praying. Like, (laughs) hi, my name is Lauren and I'm asking all that is for, you know, everybody in my family to be safe. And I want – it's like that's fucking praying. Like (laughs) that's exactly the same thing. And you know what? When you're manifesting on your little, you know, wherever you are in Bermuda and you're pulling cards and crystals and whatever, be on your knees. (laughs) Be on your knees. (laughs) <laughs> because it's divine. Like what oh you're doing God. is divine. I was just thinking about how like people are praying and they're saying, I'm praying over this home. And then here I'm saging my house saying, yep, the universe welcomes all the good energy into this home. Yes. <laughs> like, like, yes. The it's the thing. same thing. Yeah. Okay. So be grateful and be humbled yep. <laughs> by the yeah. powers that be. <laughs> yeah. I'm into it. And it's so funny because like you, I cannot even describe, you know, what I've decided is I, it is absolutely mandatory for me to write down what the past nine months have been because it's yeah, like if you told me nine months ago that I would be saying any of this stuff and not even just saying it, feeling it in every single cell of my body every single cell and that I would be the happiest, the most grounded, the most surrounded by love like ever. And just like on this, you know, I feel fantastic and I'm I'm in service to other people. It isn't, this isn't for me. It's not, it's like, Mm -hmm. I can't help it. If you had told me this eight months ago, four months ago, three months ago, two months ago, I would have, I, it would just be hilarious. It would be hilarious. It's just hard to wrap your head around the fact that your life would become (laughs) so spiritual and awake. Yeah. In a way that, I mean, you should write it down. Because I feel, and it's not even, I don't, I don't care about whether other people see me or see you and say they're awake. What I care about is when I'm actually awake during the day, like when my eyes are open and I'm awake, I feel alive. Mm Mm-hmm. It's a different feeling. I don't need somebody else to say she's woke or like I don't need somebody to say. I I can't stand that. You know what I mean? Like I don't need other people to say she has these like good ideas even. I don't give a fuck what other people say. It's just you living in your truth. I feel (laughs) great. Yeah. Yeah. Like I feel – when I wake up in the morning, I'm like – I was telling Shane today, I'm like flying out of bed. Like I wake up and I'm like – You're like, good morning. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I – 
I throw the thing open. I'm like, I hope the sun hasn't risen yet. And I run up to the rooftop <laughs> and I, I'm like a little kid. Like I want to see it. I want to be here. I want to, I'm like hungry and excited. It's fun. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's fun. It is fun. Okay. We have completely strayed, but I think this, like, just like loud. You know what? Every time we go on tangents, it's just, it feels so good. You know in what my we're body. not going to say? You know what we're not going to say anymore? And this what? is a declaration for us and for all of our listeners. We will never say again, we have completely strayed. <laughs> okay. Do you want to know why? Because everything is connected. Okay. You cannot have the best sex of your life if you aren't grateful for your clit. Uh. <laughs> so so oh you're welcome for these topics. I yeah. fucking love this week's episode. <laughs> uh, ghosting. We actually decided we like it, so do it if you want. <laughs> uh, that one got away from us. And number two, be fucking grateful to be for the people who have ghosted you. <laughs> That's exactly right. And number three, get on your knees and pray. Yeah. I don't care what Maybe I'll you are. Pray. Yeah. Just listen to Sam Smith's pray song. You'll be crying, and also you'll realize what it means. <laughs> so, and that also reminds me of Kesha's praying when oh. she's like, I "Wow, that was really you good." Found your peace. Oh, I'm gonna download that song right now. Uh, praying, yes. download. It. Uh, okay, oh, great. We are going to link the Brene Brown video in the show notes just as a reminder so everybody can uh, watch this beautiful video on vulnerability. If you've yep. been ghosted, you're feeling let down, you're feeling like you're about to give up, you need to watch this video. It is what inspired me to literally reach <laughs> to verbalize, hi, who are you to my husband when he sat next to me on a wall. It has inspired mm. Lauren and so many of her students. So we are linking that. Let's be grateful for this experience for all of the listeners. Yeah. And we will jump into a couple questions of the week. Where no, we won't. Oh, I have, you have to, to go. go. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Okay, wait. 50. Well, we can do we can do a five minute quick question. It can be rapid fire question. Yeah. Okay, wait. So, because we already kind of incorporated one, yeah, yeah. We already okay, did the I'll, spiritual I'll go one over that. Okay. Okay. So we sort of already covered our first question, which was how to incorporate spirituality. I think we covered that really well. The second question is a little more down and dirty. It is how do I prep for anal? <laughs> oh, anal. Mm-hmm. So from the expert you know what? over I, here. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you take it away with anal? Because I am forever intrigued by anal and I want to do anal, mm -hmm. but I just haven't been with anyone that I care to like do anal with. Do that with. Okay. Well, I have done it with one person, maybe my current partner, who knows? It was. Uh, and we Are you have allowed to do anal? No. That's so crazy. So it maybe wasn't with him. Uh, and the thing that you need to do is, number one, trust. Number two, lube. Number three, communication. I feel like we should do an entire ass episode on this, pun intended. And <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. That's going to be the title, an entire ass episode. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. That's so good. Oh, that's yeah. That's so good. Uh, yeah. So – Yes, trust, lube, communication, and easing into it. How to prep. Do a tiny butt plug. Do a finger. Do not just jump right into it. Like you can do a douching experience nope. if you want before. I've done it with that and without that. Um, honestly, just being in a relationship where you can really communicate with your partner because shit happens literally. So you need to yeah. be in a situation where that can be funny and your partner's not going to be like, oh my God, that's so gross. So <laughs> I'm going to say, uh, make sure you're with the right person who can actually appreciate it. And it can be, you can laugh about it and you right. can maybe cry about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um oh my and gosh. yeah, lots of lube and just communicate literally the entire time. Yeah, the entire literally. time. And if you think you're just a person with a penis who's just gonna push it in really hard and it's gonna work, no, your partner will 
literally faint. Do not do that. <laughs> you need to communicate oh and just be in a situation where you can trust because it can be really amazing. Personally, yeah. I enjoy it. <laughs> okay. Well, I will let you know when I'm into it. I love putting stuff – well, I guess I have in the past – into dudes' butts, but I've never pe- pegged anybody. Soon to come, so. TBD. <laughs> yeah. I'll let you know, kids. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great question. Great episode. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of our listeners. We are complete with episode six. Um, we are complete. I hope, I hope that you can take this and turn these practices into your real life. Please reach out with any questions. Like always, follow us on Instagram at The Den Mothers. That is our new podcast podcast page, uh, personal pages at She Wolf Lauren, at Camille Misbach. You can always write in with questions, DMs. We love to hear from our wolf pack. Do you have anything to say? I would just like to say gratitude and gratitude. not fuck you because I love you all. Yep. I love the pack. Yep. I'm here for it. Gratitude to our whole p- wolf pack. Wolf, wolf pack. Yep. Our wolf pack. That sounded like a hoof. Our wolf hoof pack. Yeah. Our I wolf love pack. hooves. <laughs> to our wolf pack. Hiffs. We will see you next week for episode number seven. Ow, 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 ow. There we go. That was pretty good. <laughs>